Hello friends, welcome to the second part of the reproduction in organism chapter. And the first part we discussed about the overview of reproduction and what reproduction actually is and why reproduction is necessary, why it's important because it means the continuation of life. And we also talked about the asexual mode of reproduction. Now in this part, we are going to talk about the sexual mode of reproduction. I told you earlier that the sexual reproduction is complex. It's more complicated than the asexual mode of reproduction. Because in asexual reproduction, it's simply the splitting of the parent cell into the daughter cell. But in sexual reproduction, it's all about mixing all the different genetic materials together to generate something new, something unique. So the fundamental difference between the asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction is in asexual reproduction there is no chance of generating new variety in the daughter. That means whatever character the parent has, uh, the daughter will have that. There won't be any change. But in sexual reproduction there is change which is possible. Because in sexual reproduction the idea is to generate a new individual, a new offspring from the genetic differences of their parents. Because in asexual reproduction, one organism can give rise to new daughter cells or daughter organisms. While in case of sexual reproduction, two separate organisms are required. And in sometimes even not two organisms, but two separate uh, structure, anatomical structures are required. That will give rise to the organism of desire. So in simple terms, I can explain the sexual reproduction in a simplest way. Like there are two types of cells required, two cells required, fusion of those two cells required to make a large cell. This is the idea of sexual reproduction. What are those two small cells? Those are one of them are egg, another one of them is known as sperm. Once they fuse with each other, they form a large giant cell known as zygote. This is the idea of sexual reproduction. Now imagine one simple thing, egg and sperm, those may be formed by one organism. So it is possible that both egg and sperm comes from one organism or another possibility that the egg comes from the mother and the sperm comes from the father to separate organism organism one organism two so what we see here if egg and sperm comes from two separate organisms then those egg and sperm they have their genetic element inside their nucleus so all this genetic element that is present in egg and sperm will fuse with each other. So this large cell, it will also have the genetic element combined from father and mother. So as they have a combination of the genetic element from father and mother, the chance of generating variety increases in the offspring. Because this zygote will produce the zygote will produce the offspring. This is the idea. Right? This is sexual reproduction. Right? Now imagine one simple thing that this egg and sperm, the structure of them are different. They are not the same. And the numbers of both of these things are also different. Right? But they can be originated from one sim single organism or can be originated from two separate organisms and that is true not only for animals but also for plants for both plants and animals because higher eukaryotic plants and animals always go with sexual reproduction and the reason behind this is with sexual reproduction we have a, a way to produce new things imagine simply that if all the organisms just look exactly like their parents then there is no variety, there is no variation, there is no change. And if there is no change, then there is no evolution. What is evolution? Evolution is a systemic process over the time of changing one organism or selection of 
the best suitable organism from a community of other individuals by different natural factors. So this selection is possible based on unique features and if all the individuals share same feature then there is no chance of evolution. But if due to this mix and match between the genetic component all the organisms all the offsprings will be different so one of that offspring is superior over the other in terms of survivability in the environment so that superior organism which can survive better in the environment will survive the others will not that is evolution okay that is possible with only this idea of sexual reproduction so in sexual reproduction the offspring looks different than their parents okay because they have different origins from their mother and father now let's assume here let's come here to the different steps because in this lecture we are actually going to talk about the different phases of sexual reproduction and the major events in sexual reproduction the events of sexual reproduction can be divided into three portions pre-fertilization event, fertilization and post-fertilization event. What are these fertilization events? What we mean by that? Remember one thing I told you, sexual reproduction means formation of a large giant cell containing the genetic material of mother and father together. That large cell is known as zygote. How this zygote is formed? By fusion of mother and father cells. So, what is the difference between these two types of cells? These cells are known as gametes. Both of them are known as gametes. So, male gamete is the sperm, female gamete is the egg. Now, they have structural difference. I draw sperm as circle here, but actually sperm have unique characteristic structures. But, these gametes are produced by their corresponding father and mother. Now the question is, how exactly this gamete is produced? The process with which an organism produces gamete is known as gametogenesis. Okay, it is known as gameto, uh, this one should be here, gametogenesis. Okay, the process with which male and female gametes are produced. Now what is unique about this gametogenesis? We know about the normal cell division process, right? If you don't know, I'll recommend you to watch cell division video in my channel. Now cell division are of two different types, mitotic cell division and meiosis cell division. So mitosis cell division means simply one parent cell is there and it will produce two identical cells. This is mitosis, right? What we mean by identical cell? Let's assume that the parent cell here carries 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is true in case of human. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So the daughter cells also have 23 pairs. And the complete set of these 23 pairs, because why, why? pair means two chromosomes at each pair. So ultimately 46 chromosomes in total. So we call this total number of pairs as 2n. So what is n is number of pairs that is 23 here. So 2 into 23 total 46. So the daughters are also 2n. Right. So when a 2n cell divides into 2 with mitosis, they also produce 2n daughter cells. Now what will happen in meiosis? The total number of chromosomes that are present in the parent cell now separated, divided in half. So instead of having 2n, the daughter cells will receive n number of chromosomes. So exactly reduced by half. What does that mean? Remember, I've been talking about uh, that this sexual reproduction increase variations. How? This is the reason. Imagine one simple thing that this parent cell carries 23 pairs of chromosome, right? So, so pairs means we can simply draw like these are all each pairs, right? And you know, 
uh, they have differences in those pairs because those pairs also originated uh, from uh, their mother and father because this pair one is from the father one is from the mother now what happens here let's assume for this particular set of pairs that when they divide into two dotted cell the chance of transferring this or this chromosome from a pair is 50 50 and this entirely depends on chance that which chromosome will transfer to the daughter so let's assume this one transfers then this one transfers then this one transfers then this one and then this one that all the single chromosomes are transferred to one of the daughter and rest of the chromosomes are transferred to another daughter so now answer me now both the daughter cells which are produced will they have same genetic makeup no the answer is no because i indicated different chromosomes with different shapes and structures and you see that the genetic makeup is now changed it's altered during meiosis so this meiosis causes the change in the genetic makeup of the daughter cells so as the daughter cells genetic makeup is changed now such daughter cells become the gametes because gametes are this cells with n number of chromosomes only so gametes are produced via gametogenesis and actually gametogenesis is nothing but a type of what meiosis cell division so all the gametes that are produced has n number of chromosomes in it so two such gametes will fuse and now the zygote will carry 2n because 2n both the chromosomes will interact both the nucleus will fuse so ultimately zygote has 2n number of chromosomes now the zygotes start dividing and producing the whole offspring so where the variety comes from during gametogenesis when meiosis generates different offsprings that is the idea of gametogenesis now this gametogenesis is a part of pre fertilization event now imagine one simple thing gametes are produced male and female gametes are produced then they will fuse and what they will produce zygote will be produced afterwards then what happens once the zygote is produced it will grow to a organism now this fusion of gametes to form zygote this particular event is known as what fertilization this event is known as fertilization fusion of male female gametes to produce zygote now as this known as fertilization this is the major event in sexual reproduction which we keep in the center so events before fertilization is known as pre fertilization events after fertilization that is the development of zygote into offspring is known as post fertilization okay so now, now let's look at the idea of this pre-fertilization and post-fertilization events. We have discussed about one of the idea of pre-fertilization event, which was gametogenesis. Now there is a question. During gametogenesis, what exactly happens? That means this gametogenesis depends on sexuality of different organisms, whether it can be a plant or animal. Sexuality influences the pattern of gametogenesis. So what we mean by this pattern of gametogenesis? Because you know, if you look at uh, the different gametes that we're looking like egg and sperm, I told you there are two ways they can be produced from a single organism or from two separate organisms. Based on this idea, we term them differently for plants as well as for animals. So similarly, what I can tell is that plants who can produce both the types of uh, gametes sperm and egg uh, type of gametes they are known as monoecious and so monoecious simply means bisexual plants okay and dioecious di dioecious means unisexual now another term that I should say 
is regarding this idea that the unisexual means that that organism produce either a egg or a sperm bisexual it produce both egg and sperm together so now what is the idea is simply there are few organisms who can produce same type of gametes that means you know the gametes that are produced i told you earlier that these gametes have different uh, shapes as well different structures as well because i i draw both the gametes same they look exactly like the same so if organisms produce the same type of gametes that is the egg looks exactly the same like the sperm in that case they are known as the homogametes okay on some other hand in in fact in most of the animals and plants the gametes are different in in their looking in in their morphology the egg and sperm looks completely different okay that is known as heterogametes so homogametes or isogamete means both the gametes look exactly like the same heterogamete means they will look differently and their structures will be different their behavior will be different now the example for human heterogamy because you know the sperm does not look like this like this uh, circle the egg is a circular uh, structure just like the any other egg but the sperm has this characteristic structure and what kind of structure i am talking about here let me erase this part so the sperm looks something like this it contains a, a head and 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 a collar in in surface and a body like this here and then rest of the tail of the sperm so this this is how sperm looks like this is also a gamete while egg is a circle thing so this heterogametes not only differ in their morphology they also differ in their behavior for example egg's role here is to simply receive the nucleus from the sperm that's it the cytosol which is present in the egg the cytoplasm which is a part of the egg remains as it is because the egg uh, because the sperm only donates its nucleus the sperm cytoplasm is not transferred to the egg during fertilization event only the nucleus is transferred that's why if you look at any organism all the cell that we have all the cytoplasm that they have are a part of our mother whatever thing that is present in the egg we have received it so if a mother is somehow infected in any any cytosolic site or any proteins that are present in the cytosol that mother is going to transfer that disease to all their daughters and sons that is the idea this is known as cytoplasmic inheritance which is not a normal mode of inheritance normal mode of inheritance is always the genetic mode of inheritance or nuclear mode of inheritance but this is unique because nuclear inheritance depends on both mother and father but the cytoplasmic mode of inheritance depends on only mother so here you see this heterogametes the sperm looks different it also functions different so egg remains as it is in one particular place sperm needs to be moved from one place to the other sperm needs to make its journey so sperm needs to rotate its tail to move forward that's why sperm needs a lot of energy for the movement right that's unique and also the number of sperms are hugely different thousands fold more than the number of eggs that are produced because eggs are limited but there are more sperms that are produced but one interesting fact although there are thousands and thousands of different sperms more sperms are produced but once one sperm attaches and fuses with the egg then no other sperm will be allowed to fuse so the egg is ready to fuse with only one sperm and the nucleus form only one sperm right and it never allows multiple sperms to donate their nucleus inside the egg right so because multiple sperm fusion may lead to the change and destruction uh, to the future offspring that's why it's not allowed it's prevented so this idea of heterogamy is always present and that helps uh, the behavior of those two those two gametes and the fusion made easy so that's that's about the gametogenesis but i told you remember the sexuality is also different uh, and i talked about the sexuality regarding the monoecious and diocious 
type of plants as well as the heterosexual like the bisexual as well as the unisexual organisms now imagine one simple thing organisms which can produce both egg and sperm are unique because they are less in number basically most of the organisms that we see and know are bisexual uh, are sorry unisexual that means they can produce only one type of gamete a female will produce egg and a male will produce sperm now if one animal if you look at one particular animal which is bisexual can produce both they are named differently they are known as hermaphrodites 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 means they have both the feature of both the types of gender male as well as female and there are a few example of hermaphrodites like earthworm they have hermaphrodites c elegans is another type of nematode which is also have the hermaphrodite feature that they can have the feature of they can produce their own egg they can produce their own sperm it can feed the same thing here for plants you can see few plants out there who can produce like both the types of male and female parts together example coconut if you look at coconut is kind of a bisexual tree it can produce their own uh, mm, female part that is the, mm, the 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 egg that it can produce in the ovary and also uh, the male anthers and pollens through which it can involve in the process of the reproduction themselves while if you look at papaya which is another plant it is unisexual plant so one type of papaya plant is only male another type is only female so for reproduction they need to migrate their pollen that which is which is a part of the male uh, structure needs to be transferred from one tree to the other female tree to produce a new plant that's the difference so if it's unis if, if it's if it's a bisexual organism then the chance of reproduction is high the rate of reproduction is high because they can do that fast if because let's say if one plant if you're looking at one plant it carries both male as well as female part so easily the male portions can interact to the female portion and can reproduce but in case of uh, the unisexual organisms whether it's a plant or animal we need to do physical work for example egg will remain in one place sperm needs to migrate towards the egg and fusion is required and that is challenging so that's why most of the sperms are destroyed they can't make the journey only one can make the journey similarly in case of plants as well you know two two plants are present in two opposite side of a place so when air is there or any, any other pollinators are required who will take uh, the male structure of the plant and then bring it to the female structure for the sexual reproduction to continue so it's more difficult but it can be achieved with other methods in plants it is known as the pollinations and there are different process of pollination which we have studied in the earlier classes so you can watch that video although so now we know about the sexuality now we know about the gametogenesis now this idea gamete transfer this this idea i already told about gamete gamete transfer is nothing but it's an idea of unisexual unisexual organisms because for uh, for bisexual organism gamete transfer is also present but it's easy to achieve because you know if you imagine a plant let's say this is this is the structure and receiver this is the female structure of a plant and let's say the male structure if i draw the anther it looks something like this so here are the male structures and it whenever it reaches there and it will go and fertilize uh, the, the plant so if both the structures male structure and female structure are present nearby then it's far easy otherwise we need to transfer this male gamete to fuse with the female gamete that is known as the gamete transfer and pollination is an example of gamete transfer in case of animals the gamete transfers are possible depending upon the type of animals we are talking about for example few animals will live in ocean in aquatic environments in those cases uh, they can produce all their eggs and can release the egg outside while the fertilization so this fertilization for animals can be of two different type external fertilization and internal 
fertilization. Let me divide it into two external and internal fertilization. So, what is the difference between the two? External fertilization means the event of fertilization will take place outside the animal body. Internal fertilization means the event will take place inside that animal body or the body of the female of that animal. Now, external fertilization is common for fish, amphibians, for example, frog and any other fish you take. They produce their egg, they release the egg outside into the aquatic environment. And as this aquatic environment, uh, so it's floating in the water, at that point, sperms need from, from the organisms nearby, from the same species nearby, transfers itself and attach to that egg and fertilize it. That's the external fertilization. While internal fertilization, humans, in case of human or most of the mammals, all the mammals, they uh, undergo internal fertilization, reptiles undergo internal fertilization. The idea of internal fertilization, it's simply transferring the sperm inside uh, the female body of that organism. And the transfer is made internally like humans or reptiles, like snake, lizards out there. They do this job internally. So the egg that is produced by the female organism is not released out into the environment. It's kept inside and the sperm insert itself inside and the sperm will fuse with the egg and fertilize the egg. That's the idea in, uh, in case of this internal fertilization. Now, this according to these two types of fertilization, these gamete transfers are required. For example, in case of external fertilization, the gamete transfer takes place outside the body. So it's more challenging. For internal fertilization, it's comparatively easier. But so that's why the number of sperms required is little less compared to the external fertilization. Now we will talk about the event that is fertilization. I told you the event of fertilization at the very beginning that the fusion of n number of chromosome containing cells together, the cytosol kept from the nucleus, uh, from, from the egg only. Sperm will be degraded outside after the delivery of the nucleus. So sperm binds uh, to the egg surface here. Okay, Let's say this is the sperm binding to the outside. Once the nucleus is transferred, the rest of the part of the sperm is destroyed and the nucleus from sperm and egg fuse to make a 2n number of chromosomes inside the zygote. We call them zygote and the first cell to create any organism. You are looking at a human being here and all these human beings are produced from this one cell that is the zygote. Now the zygote keeps on dividing and dividing to make a whole organism and that's a part of post fertilization event. So post fertilization event is also known as embryogenesis. Embryogenesis means when a zygote from one cell, it can produce a multicellular organism like human or let's say, let's take any amphibians, reptiles or any other unique multicellular organisms. So it's a miracle of life that from one cell, how exactly it continues to divide and produce a complete, fully functional adult organism. So this embryogenesis is a part of this post fertilization and this embryogenesis requires the zygote to continuously divide and those divisions are mitotic cell division, mitosis, not meiosis. Meiosis only takes place during the synthesis of gametes of sexual reproduction. Rest of the cell divisions from a normal cell to produce more cells are mitosis. So this mitosis continue to divide uh, the cells and all the cells of our body as you can see those are known as our body cells or somatic cells. So the, all these somatic cells of our body You'll, you'll see all the cells and all these cells, they are identical, they are the same, but they function differently due to some other reason. We'll talk about that in, in future videos, but they are identical in the genetic makeup. They're the same in the genetic makeup. So this embryogenesis is also different for different organisms, right? For example, in case of uh, like, because there are these two types of uh, post fertilization event that we can see during the embryogenesis. One is uh, the embryogenesis process that takes place inside that animal or it may take place outside the body of that animal. If it takes place inside uh, the animal, then it is known as viviparous. 
and if it takes place outside that animal that is known as oviparous so oviparous and viviparous are the two types of uh, fertilization uh, uh, sorry embryogenesis events so let me divide them oviparous and viviparous viviparous inside oviparous outside just like the external and internal fertilization this process is also different for example snakes or duck chicken all this case the development of embryo takes place outside the female body that is known as oviparous because let's say the fertilization event is done and uh, the duck lays egg outside and then it developed the egg outside their body by the proper incubation that is oviparous but for humans viviparous the process and nurturing of a child takes place inside the body not outside right so once uh, the zygote is formed then the zygote needs to be implanted in the woman the body of a woman and then it start dividing inside a special pouch known as placenta and then this zygote start dividing and producing a complete fully functional human being that is viviparous because it takes place inside uh, the body of the woman so that's the difference between these two type regarding post fertilization events now the same thing also happens for the plants the post fertilization event for the plants are kind of similar whether it can be uh, either of uh, the monoecious or dioecious plants after the fertilization event the rest of the things are almost same between monoecious and dioecious plants because what happens there is after the fertilization if you look at here this was the ovary and inside there are ovules right that are present so once they start developing right then most of the outer structures are destroyed and it only keep few things what that these ovules are converted to seeds and the ovary of this plant female flower converted into the fruit and this ovary uh, th this is filled with a, a hard shell outside as well as inside there will be some uh, fruit stored uh, like the the few of the sugar molecules stored inside uh, which we eat as a fruit so fruit is nothing but the modified version of the ovary of a plant female flower and the ovules inside the fruit converted into the seed of the fruit that is the idea for the plant development after the fertilization event we'll study about this development more in the next class regarding the plant uh, fertilization and the reproduction of plants okay so i hope you understand the idea behind this sexual reproduction and remember one more thing that i missed to say that is the phases of reproduction now as you know all these different events of reproduction we know the the reproduction is not possible throughout our age i told you in the first uh, class on the first lecture about the reproductive biology that every single organisms have a life span for the reproduction we start at a particular age and end at a particular age before re reaching a specific age animals or plants they are not ready for the reproduction so that age is very much necessary so there are two phases of everyone's life regarding in terms of reproduction the first phase is known as juvenile phase juvenile phase is a phase where an animal or plant is not ready to reproduce which may be varied with different examples different animals or different plants they are different but the later stage is known as a vegetative state this vegetative phase of their life is actual reproductive phase of animals and plants that's the idea now few animals can reach the vegetative phase faster few animals can reach it slower for example humans reach it later in on the other hand if you look at a uh, chicken or a duck it reach it fast okay and total lifespan also plays an important role to signify these phases if the total lifespan of the organism is less then they will reach the vegetative phase fast and if the total lifespan is more then they will reach it slower like the humans as we have a long lifespan we have we reach vegetative phase far later so juvenile phase and vegetative phase okay so
Concluding all this event of sexual reproduction, I can only say the difference between asexual and sexual in asexual reproduction is simpler and after division, the new offspring looks exactly the similar like the parent, exactly the same like the parent and it is genetically same as the parent. But in sexual reproduction, the offspring is not genetically same as the parent because they have variations in it and sexual reproduction is important so the meiosis is important that helps in the sexual reproduction to produce gametes which are required for organisms to grow and evolutions to be possible. So keep that thing in your mind.